Oh. Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Miscellaneous Measures. I just finished my reaction to Queen's Gambit penultimate episode. I forgot what it's called as. Yeah, it was called like adjournment or something, right? And yeah, the f last episode is appropriately titled Endgame. And I have absolutely no clue as usual as to what I'm going to see in this because surely we are going to see her go to Moscow and she has to play at least one game against Ball Rob. Like there is no way they are going to rob us the viewers of that. I don't know if he, she will beat him because like you know they could go with an interesting sort of storyline where she continuously loses to him. Like whatever she does, like if she is drunk, if she is hungover, if she is uh, really in a good form, whatever the case, if she has turned her life around, whatever the case, she's always going to lose to him. That sort of a thing. If they do do that, that would be interesting. But I feel like they'll obviously you know, go for the more cliched sort of, not cliched, but you know, feel good factor sort of thing where she beats him. Uh, that's what I'm expecting at least. But apart from that, I have no idea how this episode is going to progress. In the sense that I did not see the Jolene coming back to the series again. I had absolutely zero clue. Like uh, There was like no clue that was going to happen. So yeah, so from that point of view, I have no idea what's going to happen in this episode. Um, hopefully we will see the Game of Thrones guy again one final time. Hopefully we'll see Towns one final time. Harry will take, yeah, I mean, he'd be features, cool. He doesn't, I'm not really going to be bothered. Uh, I hope Mr. Scheibel comes. That would be fantastic. I mean, if Beth manages to beat Borgov, then I feel like the Scheibel guy, I mean, he has to come back in some way or form, right? Surely. Um, yeah, I hope they don't give the father a redemption arc. I'm sorry, his character is done. I didn't even feel the need for his character to be shown in the previous episode. Like, I, I don't know if his, like, if that, like, one or two minute scene provided any sort of anything to the story. Like, doesn't matter, does it? Like, whether she owns the house or not. Like, I couldn't really care less about it in terms of story, but, you know, they did do that. So, yeah, I think I just want to begin with this reaction. So, here we go. Oh, it's a one hour episode. So, this is obviously a bigger one. In most times, when people tell us something's for the best, it's for the worst. This time is true, okay? Be right back. Oh, so they are going to obviously, yeah, they are going to obviously deal with the accident, right? Like what she said just before the accident. I feel like that was something that was hinted at in the first episode, but they never really talked about it after that. Mr. Sharvel, Dad. What? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, you bastards! Why the hell would you do that? I was really looking forward to like one speck of hope that this guy will come back after Ben beats Borgov. I mean, for fuck's sake! You you could have killed anybody, though, hmm. not Mister Shivan. God, <clears throat> so what will your fellow radicals think? You being with a rich white lawyer. Fuck them if they can't take a joke. <laughs> Different choices. Wait, I just made a mistake. I just realized. Uh, she's only 21 or 22, right? So obviously the last time she met Jolene wasn't a decade ago. It was just like about six or seven years ago. I just realized that. For some reason, I thought she was 27. She wasn't, obviously.
Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this guy had cutouts of her newspaper articles. Oh, this is bad, man. I mean, this makes it even worse. Like, what? Wow. I mean, I did not want this to be the motivation for her to be Borgov. I mean, for fuck's sake, guys. I mean, seriously. <clears throat> you didn't have to kill him off. <clears throat> Cry it out, come on. I mean, at least she has that picture with her. I mean, <laughs> they, they have this TV series has made me like my eyes well up at least. I mean, I'm not going to be crying a lot, but I don't usually cry at anything like, especially like TV shows or movies or anything. But I have rarely cried at anything from the movies or TV shows. But yeah, this is bad. Like you didn't have to do the viewers like that. <laughs> I mean, killing Mr. Scheibel was one thing, but... Oh, fuck. Oh, I really like from you, Elizabeth. But now I can barely save me. This is a... I mean, I don't know how I feel about this, like... It's sort of a decision, like... It's what we are. But, yeah, this is cool. It's doubtful. But you never know. 1968! 1968 Moscow! I feel like I know the year for some reason. Wait, 1968 was the year United won the Champions League, right? I'm not sure. I think it was the year. In 66 it was England winning the World Cup, right? This episode has been really... I mean, I think it has gone back to the roots of slow sort of episode where things have... I mean, obviously there are some things that have happened quite unexpectedly, but I feel like there's a lot more slowness to this episode than some of the previous ones. I feel like sort of like a building up to the Borgo versus Elizabeth Harmon sort of thing. Do they clap in between games? There are other games going on, right? Why are they clapping? This doesn't make sense. And he's obviously reading her game. That's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure this happens. But yeah, this is the 60s and I'm sure it's sort of like creative liberty that's given. And no clapping guys, there are people playing games. I'm sorry, but what the hell? There is absolute silence in the crowd when games are going on. That's weird, but... Again, creative liberty. <laughs> They did say it was a round robin, right? Or am I wrong? No, no, I think they said round robin for a different tournament. Yeah, but this also has to be a round robin sort of thing, I'm guessing, because eight people, so seven games or something like that. What? What? 
TV dial a kind when he was a kid. I mean, they've got a guy who with a very like bushy hair, like Einstein or something, and he's like some sort of a stereotype for some reason. But he be Dalekine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, oh! So she she did not win this game. Okay, that's interesting. They have suddenly brought back that thing, uh, joining of the games. I mean, there was a person who commented, right? I'm sorry for pausing, but I usually talk about the comments that I get, but I, for some reason, because I've had this sort of four or five days break, I sort of completely missed it. But this reminds me, there was a person who commented that this used to happen back in those days because there was no computer so you couldn't like use engines and stuff i'm guessing that's what that person meant that kind of makes sense but at the end of the day if you are a grandmaster if you are a player with 2700 2800 sort of rating and both of them are right so if you if you're playing a game and after like five, six hours or something, you decide that the game should be continued the next day. I feel like it gives both the players sort of like a lot of thinking time. I mean, they are chess players, right? They are chess players, they are grandmasters. They are not just regular people playing chess. Regular people playing chess, they wouldn't be able to think beyond like four or five moves in depth. And even like only two or three like different sort of moves in that. And not even like... I mean, these people like play chess in their, with their minds, they can think up to, I mean, I'm just giving out a number here, but easily like a lot of positions, a lot of moves in depth. So it sort of gives them like sort of a, a mid inning sort of preparation break, which sort of doesn't sit right with me for some reason. But yeah, but we are obviously seeing that again this episode. That's interesting. See, this is what I, this is what I, this is what I was talking about just now. So, Borgom is basically, like four or five different people are basically talking with that old guy about what the game should proceed as. <laughs> and this is ridiculous, like, I don't understand this adjourning of the game sort of thing. Yeah, I don't feel good about this. Like, I know that she's going to beat him, but there's something I find that is wrong with this, this, put three this sort of story. And I'll tell you that. Lachenko having the white pieces. His still unstopped attack. And that extra allotment of time. So, it was all the more impressive when she beat him with 25 minutes still on her clock. Excellent. What a brilliant recovery. I resign with Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. This just makes it worse what just happened. Like, I'm sorry, but this guy was introduced as the person who defeated Alekine when he was a kid. And they also mentioned that with age, you know obviously with age, you know, your your sort of brain capacity and stuff like that decreases and I get that. But Having introduced this person as this sort of genius and suddenly like what they basically did was which I find wrong and like I can't like, 
stop myself from talking about is the fact that when you introduce this guy who is just a genius or something like that, and then suddenly reduce him to such a level that you're having this main sort of antagonist sort of portrayal of Borgo and some other guy, basically they are discussing about the position and what he should be playing. Like, I mean, I get it, right? All the chess players in the world, all the grandmasters and all the big tournaments, they have a team of people with them and they discuss like stuff, like how to play, what to play, the training and stuff like that, that does happen. That's not a problem for me. What the problem is, is it almost felt like this guy was told by Borgov to play something and this guy played the first move like that, but then did not see the consequent moves coming, which makes this guy look like a fool. But I'm sorry, this guy is not supposed to be a fool. This guy was supposed to be good. And that in turn is sort of making me or making this whole situation with Elizabeth Harmon actually playing well, sort of undermining that. And I don't like that. I'm sorry, but I don't like it. I've played your game since I was a small girl. I've always really admired you. You are how old again? I'm, I'm 20. Don't tell me. It'll only drive the stake through my <laughs> I went over your games at this time. You are a marvel, my dear. Wait, what was this guy's name again? I may have just played the best chess player of my life. You will get used to it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you would... Who was that? A mistake. You had to put that bloody accident right I now, care. didn't you? Like, assholes. <laughs> what I do with you? Please tell me she did not cause the accident, like, purposefully. Mama. Please tell me she did not commit, like, suicide or something. Oh, you bitch. What the fuck? 